Hello, I'm Crafty Patty, and I'm back again with another great sewing tutorial. I do listen to your comments, and that's why I'm making this bag. On this bag I made several years ago that folds up into the little pocket. Some of you had a hard time getting a really nice flat edge on this curve here. This particular one was folded over once, folded over again, and then top stitched. But a little harder for maybe a beginner sewer. So I have created this bag for you that will give you beautiful edges with no problem on any puckering. It is made with a little bit of a short lining and you just place the lining on top and sew them together and then top stitch, which creates a beautiful edge. This pattern here, I've made it so it's big enough that you could take it and put it on your shoulder. So that's really handy. And I've also created a little bag that goes inside. So this little bag sits inside and you don't even know it's there. It's nice and handy. And all you do is you take it and you scrunch it all up like a sleeping bag. And it doesn't take long to stuff it all in here. A little easier than stuffing than it was for folding this one. This one you had to fold it almost perfectly to get it into the little pocket, but it was possible. This one here, you just scrunch it up, pull it up, and you're ready to go with this darling little bag. And you can also add a little clip if you want it to go onto any of your larger bags or backpack or wherever you want to hook it to so you've got a handy shopping bag ready to go. I have created a pattern and I don't have a website so you do have to make your own pattern. I walk you step by step on how to create the, your pattern, how to mark it out and then you'll always have that and you can make mini bags from that point on. Don't worry about marking down all the supplies. The supply list will be in the description box below this video for you so it's all there ready for you to make these cute little bags that fold into these darning little, it's like a mini me of the big one. <laughs> Anyways, keep watching and let's get started and make this wonderful bag. I use wrapping paper from the dollar store because I can get a nice long size out of it. And so we're going to just start by squaring up our left side here. I'm just going to throw in my Omni Good Ruler just so it stops rolling on me. And a pair of scissors. And I'm going to just take my left side here and I'm going to bring it over anywhere along doesn't matter what line, and I'm just making sure that this is squared up to one of my grid lines on my cutting mat. Bring on your army grid ruler, and I'm matching up a line from my cutting mat and my omni grid ruler so it's straight all the way along. Once you've lined that up, you can come in with your rotary cutter. This is a what I use for my paper, not for my fabric, because if you intermix them, then you'll have a dull blade for your fabric and we don't want that. Once you've gone along, carry it along, continue to match up where you matched up your original line, and once you've relined it up again, continue your cut. So I'll bring my paper right down to the edge of my cutting mat board, and again making sure that this is lined up along my bottom line all the way along. And I'm just gonna cut past my 21 inches so I can bring my ruler over here so I can get a good even cut. So we're just gonna cut this excess off here. Now I'm gonna make sure that my bottom edge is lined up and I'm gonna use this line on my cutting mat to make sure that is nice and squared up. And you're going to find your 21 inch mark and you can also use 
you're marking along here to make sure you're squared up all the way along. That's why I wanted to cut some off so I could see my markings on my cutting mat. We've cut our 21 inches this way and we need to cut our 28 inches this way. So again, line up your side. Because this has been in a roll, I'm just going to reverse this and roll it the opposite way so it stays more flat. Now bring your rectangle you've cut right down to the bottom. Then we're going to take our Omni Quadrator and we're going to measure up to the 16 inch mark. And we're going to draw a line across. And you're also going to draw a line for your lining because this will be two patterns in one. And you're going to draw it at 12 and 3 quarters inches up. And we now have drawn in a line at 12 and 3 quarters inches. That's going to be our lining that will come down to here. And this is our bag that will come down to here, which is marked at 16 inches or 40.6 centimeters. And now along your 16 inch line, and I want you to mark in 4 inches and make a mark. And mark at seven inches. Bring your ruler up to the top and do the same. Working at four inches and seven inches. And then just bring your ruler across. Four and my seven. And we're only going to do one side because we're going to be folding in the pattern and cutting it out that way so both sides are identical. You don't have to do this again. So again, you've marked in four inches or 10.2 centimeters, and you've marked in a line at seven inches or 17.8 centimeters. This is going to be your handle of your bag. On your 16 inch line, you're now going to make a mark at half an inch in and draw a line and you're going to make a mark at seven inches down and make a mark at seven inches. To round the corner of my um, bag I'm using one of my dinner plates and it doesn't have to be the exact same size as mine but mine is approximately 11 inches or about 28 centimeters and I'm going to use that to round my corner. Whatever you've got, something similar to the same size. And then I'm going to mark my plate at this marking here, so it butts up to there. And I'm going to make it so it butts up to that intersection where I drew in half an inch. And place it so you can draw your line from here to here. Okay. Now the only thing I want you to do is just to even this out a little bit more. Just bring this through just to flatten it out a little bit more right in here. And to round out the corner here, I'm using just the bottom of my squeeze bottle and it happens to be approximately two inches wide or that would be approximately five centimeters. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, but I'm giving you an approximation so you can have about the same as me. And then just match up until your bottle hits the side to the side, and then draw in your curved line. You've made all your measurements, so now all we have to do is we're going to fold this in half so we can measure our pattern on both sides and cut it out at the same time. So I'm just going to 
make sure my pattern is matched up on sides. Then I'll just use my fingers to come down, making sure it's still matched up. Then you can come in and cut it out. And all you're cutting out is this section and this section. You can choose to come in with a rotor cutter if you're comfortable with that, or you can use a pair of scissors. What I like to do is I come in with my rotary cutter to start and I just round off my corners with the scissors. So I'll come in with my rotary cutter. Up to my curve, and then I'll get this line and then I'll cut out the curve with my scissors. And now I just have to come in here and what I like to do is I come further up, not to the point, and then when I'm cutting, I'm just rounding as I go like this. And then a nice rounded cut. And same with this one, I'm going to bring up my scissors so it's more up into the middle of my blades and let's round this one off as well. Now we've got both sides identical. And there you have your full pattern. Now, the other thing is you can choose to just use this pattern piece to cut out your lining. And then you would just fold it right on that line there. And crease it. And I would do it the other way around as well. Once you crease it that way, come in and crease the other way as well. And then you'd be ready to cut out your lining. And so then you'd be cutting out this part, you just fold this up, and then you would cut along your fabric like so. If that is too difficult for you, then by all means, you can go and cut yourself and put this on another piece of paper and cut out your lining piece exactly the same as this one if you want to do that. Here's your final pattern piece and I will zoom up so you can see the measurements on the top. I use quilting cottons for all of my bags because I just prefer cottons and becoming beautiful patterns and colors. Now I have cut two meters of each of these. That will give you ample enough. If you want to cut right to the fine line, then you can get away with cutting 1.6 of a meter. I, I wouldn't go 1.5, you're gonna be just a little too tight. Being that we're going to place our fabric on the fold, you won't have enough to go from salvage edge to salvage edge because you won't have enough depth. So you're going to need to fold your cut edge to your cut edge with right sides together. Now, I just want to mention that if you really like your one fabric for your main part of your bag and you want to make two bags, it is possible, but you will need to use something else for your lining. You won't have enough for your lining. But if you fold these two together, I'm just showing you that this pattern will just fit that's like just and of course you'd be on your fold but you're not going to have enough to do two lines and if you want to make your bag you would have to use a different fabric for your lining but just saying 
if you buy the two meters, then that's what you could do. So I'll open this back up. And I'm going to bring my pattern piece on and I'm going to bring it right down to the fold into the far left of my fabric here. Just so I'm not wasting anything and I will pin this in place. And again, you're on the fold of the fabric. Now, if you just cut the one pattern piece out, then that's fine. You would cut this out and then unpin it and then cut just your lining. But if you cut your second lining piece, then you can put that on now as well. And then making sure when you pin this piece on that you've cleared enough on this side here. My preference is to cut with a rotary cutter, but if you're not comfortable with them, by all means, you can use your scissors. If you're going to make the little bag that the large bag scrunches into, then you'll need two pieces of fabric 7x7. Seven seven. Here's your centimeters. One piece 2x3 and two pieces of cord cut at 18 inches. Remember how I was talking about how you could get two bags out of this two meters of fabric if you plan it out and you come really close to the left edge and maybe even into the salvage a little bit. But even then I didn't have to do that because I've got about a quarter inch left here and a quarter inch left here so I can get another bag out of this. I like fabric so let's make the two bags. And you can see that the pattern has fit into here, but as I mentioned before, you will need to use a different fabric for your lining. And I just happen to have another piece of fabric that will match fine for my lining. And I've got lots left over for my little bag if wanted. So let's make the two bags. First step, you're gonna take your lining pieces. This is the right side, this is the wrong side, and we're just going to fold over one quarter inch approximately. Iron that down and come back, fold it over again, and iron that down. And do that to your other piece of lining. And top stitch close to your edge here. While I'm doing this bag, I'm also going to do the other bag with the plain lining. And then each step I'm doing at the same time. So then I'll have two bags finished at the same time. And away we go again. And next step, you're going to open up your bag. And then you're going to match up your lining to each of the handles. And then pin in place. I do like to use the magic clips for this because I tend to find that it doesn't uh, pucker up the fabric when I'm sewing. This pattern and this way of sewing you're going to get a really nice clean edge with no buckling and very, very easy to sew, unlike the first bag pattern I showed you. So pin this one on, go to your other end, and do the same on this end. For sewing your edges, you're going to start here, and you're going to just do your outside edge here and stop here. You'll start here. Do the inside and stop. And then you'll start here and then do your outside edge and stop there. And sew around with one quarter inch seams all the way. And now we're going to sew the inside of our bag handles. And when you get to your curve here, just go a little slower and you can just use your hands to work your fabric around to get a nice curve in here. 
using my hands to pull the fabric around. Get that nice curve. Again, placing your hands on your fabric here and just use the use your hands to guide it around your corner. And your last seam on the outside handle. You've sewn up to here, you've sewn in here, and you've sewn up here, and these should both be open. Now I want you to trim your seams at one eighth an inch all the way around. And you'll also cut into these ones as well, trimming down to one eighth of an inch. Once you've trimmed down to one eighth of an inch, then you're going to come into all your curves and you're going to clip up to your seam line, but not into it. And make little tiny cuts. Be very careful not to cut into that seam though. And by doing that, you'll notice that when the fabric is pulled, it will almost sit straight. Outside ones, and this one, and the one on the other side. Clip all your curves. Once you've clipped all your curves, you're going to turn your handles to the right side. Just scrunch it all back in there, pull it out the other side. And now pressing is your friend. Making sure that your seam is really nice and open and you can use wet fingers for that just by moving it back and forth with your fingers making sure that you're seeing the seam on the inside there. Once you know you're good, working it back and forth and ironing it. If you've done perfect sewing and your both sides match up perfectly, then you did great. But as you can see, this could possibly happen. But I want you to make sure that if you are going to trim some off, do it on both sides so both of your handles will be identical size. So match them up and then take the same off of both sides. And whatever you took off there, do the same on the other side. Just make sure they're both matched up and you're taking the same amount off again. Once you've evened up your ends, then what you want to do is you just want to tuck them inside, fold in the side, fold in this side, and then bring them in. And you want that to be about a quarter inch down. And then once you're at a quarter inch down, then iron that in place. It's a little bit too far down, you can just bring it up with your fingers, bring it across, and iron that in place. And do the same for the other three. And now what we're going to do with the lining facing you, we're going to be joining these two handles together. So we're going to be folding this one like in like this and this one in like this and they're going to go inside each other so what I want you to do is no one's ever exactly perfect when they're sewing look and see if one is just slightly smaller than the other and if you've got one that's so slightly bit smaller than that one is going to go into the larger one so let's slip this one which is the little bit smaller one into the larger one and we're going to slip that in there 
So you're about a half an inch in. Now I can feel with my fingers and I can see where my edge of my other one is. So I'm going to bring this one in just that little bit more on the top here. So it's the same up and down. And once you've got them in exactly the same depth here and depth here, let's just pin that in place. And we'll do the same to the other side. We're going to sew a little bit of a box. We'll come up, over, down, and over. So here's our join. We're going to start in the middle here so we can keep our ends intact. And then we're going to sew down, pivot, sew across, come up. Pivot, sew across, and then join up with our first sewing line. And I'm going to sew as close to the edge as I can, starting in the middle. And we'll start right there. And then sew to the end. And then I'm going to pivot. I'm going to sew across the bottom. And I can feel where I have to sew up to. I'm right there. And pivot. And we'll sew down the other side. And then do your pivot. Again. Get that fabric right in if you can. And there we've got a nice secure handle on the top now and we've just boxed around with the stitching. We've got our handles finished and now we need to do our sides and we're going to do an easy French seam. So fold your bag in half and match up your side seams, folding down your, your lining, matching up that corner and then bringing it down to the end and let's pin that all in place. Do the same for your other side. Again, remember you've got wrong sides together. Your right side is facing out. Because that's how we do a French seam. We're going to start on our handles and we'll sew down. And we're going to be sewing a half inch seam allowance. And the same for your other side. Now cut your seams to one quarter inch. Now you'll want to press the seam open as much as you can and then we're going to turn it and press again. So if you've got a smaller ironing board, just slip your bag over that tip of your iron ironing board and that will just help so you can have it flatter and then you can press open this seam. So just press this to one side. It doesn't matter what side you press it on. Just open it up with your fingers. Wait your fingers again if you need to. And just press it open. That will get you started for when you press on the other side. Do the same for your other side. And now turn to the wrong side. And now because you've pre-pressed the other side, it's much easier to get this nice and open. Then take it off your ironing board, folding along your seam line. And now come in using your fingers if you need to. 
and press along that seam. And same for the other side. And now because we've cut these seams back to one eighth of an inch, when we sew a quarter inch seam now, then it will encase those raw edges on the right side. And do the same for the other side. Well, we've got the bag inside out. Let's box our corners. First thing I want to do is press the bottom of your bag so you've got a guideline to do your box corners. Then you can come in with your hand and start forming your corner for an approximation. Pulling it out like so. And while I'm moving my fabric to get that perfect corner, I'm looking on the back side. There's my crease right there. And I can feel that my seam is over here. So I know I need to come over this way more. So we'll try that again. Here's my seam. There's my crease in my bottom of my fabric. And there's my stitch line. So I'm going to do another test. Let's come in with my pin. You need to go straight down. And we'll see if we hit into my pressing line. And we're right on our pressing line. I don't know if you can see that, but we are dead on. Okay, so now we know that the angle is perfect. We pop a pin in here on the top. I'm going to place this right on the line here. So I'm following a, a baseline down here so it's at the right angle. Bring on my ruler and one inch down, I'm going to draw in my sewing line. And that's ready to go. And we're going to sew straight across. your cute little box corner. Turn your bag to the right side. And your last step is to top stitch around the inside of your handles and around the outside of your handles. And you're going to do it with a quarter inch seam and that will encase the raw edges inside. And I did say a one quarter inch seam, but being that we've cut this back to one eighth, we can kind of go a little bit smaller than a quarter inch, just so you can encase them on the inside. And again, when you get to your corners, using your hands to bring it around for a nice clean sewing line. And just go slowly around that curve. And when you're doing your outside edge, just go in and see what side you've pressed your seam to and what side you've sewn this inside French seam. And then follow it up and then just make sure that when you're sewing your top stitching that this is going to the same side and just clip it in place so you know that it's going in the right direction and then you won't forget when you're going around for your top stitching. You've got a little bit of bulk to go over with this French seam on the inside so you might want to just tug on your fabric just slightly but if your machine is okay it'll probably go over just fine but if you're having a problem just give it a little slight help to get it to go through and just go slowly and then you'll get over your little hump and I'm sure you'll be happy with this really nice beautiful flat seam on the curve both on the inside and on the outside and that's why I wanted to show you this bag 
um, because I know a couple of you had a hard time with the curve on this bag, and this one was folded over and folded over and then top stitched, and a little bit harder to get that really beautiful smooth edge. Final measurement of our bags, 19 inches across by about 50 and 3 quarters inches in depth, not counting the handles. Two beautiful bags made at the same time, and it saves you a lot of time when you do each step at the same time. You're not getting up and down. Perfect. So I'm glad I made the two bags. And this was the one that we got the extra piece of fabric so we could do the lining, so we'd have enough to make these two gorgeous bags. And this is the one with the regular fabric. And all the seams are going to be enclosed. You've got no raw edges showing, and because we sewed at the quarter inch on here. There's no raw edges on the inside here. And we've got our French seams on this side and this side. I've also made it so the handles are on the longer side and so you can wear it over your shoulder, which is really handy. <laughs> that was a bit of a pun. Handy, handles, oh, okay, I know. <laughs> so these bags are complete, but I've also made a little drawstring pouch that gets attached to the inside of your shopping bag like so so you don't even know it's there and if you want to fold it all up you just go inside here grab this bag and you just scrunch it up like a sleeping bag inside this handy little drawstring bag and cinch it up and You've got this darning little pouch with your shopping bag inside. And I'll show you how to add the little tab. And you can attach this to the outside of a bag if you don't have room to put this inside your purse. So if you want to know how to make this bag, keep watching. To make your little tab for your little drawstring bag, we're going to fold in approximately one quarter inch on your short edges are in place. Now fold in half. And you've got an easy crease line so you know where to fold into. So fold, open it up and then fold into that crease line. And fold in half again. And now top stitch along your edge. Place two of your seven inch squares right sides together and then on the top edge you'll want to mark down at one and a half inches on both sides Clip your sides together, and we're going to sew down each side, but up to our one and a half inch mark. I have a five eighths mark on my sewing machine. If you don't have one of those, you can get yourself a sewing knitting gauge and do it that way so you know where your five eighths inch is. Let's sew up to our mark. On your other side, starting at your mark, just sew down about half an inch. Make sure your needle is down so it holds your fabric in place. We're going to fold our little tab in half and you're going to insert the folded end into the fabric. So open up both pieces and place your folded edge to the center of your fabric, the edges with the edges, and you're gonna bring it back about a quarter of an inch. Bring it up to where you stop sewing. Let's bring our fabric back over again. And let's sew through all of those layers. Once I get to the tab, 
I'm going to reverse and just give it some strength and then come forward again. And then continue on. Bring your seam and just roll it into the middle so you can access it. Pull it apart and you can just come in and finger press this part in here, making sure that you're folding your ends nice and tidy. And you can come in and iron that. And now you're going to come in and you're going to fold over like a quarter inch seam and tuck that underneath and iron in place. And do the same for the other side. And do the same for this other seam over here. And then we're going to go in and we're going to top stitch. But I'll show you how to do that when I get to the machine. Now making sure that you've got your other side of your bag out of the way, you're going to come in and you're going to top stitch these down. We're going to start with the bag inside out and then we'll see what we do at the end here. So let's just get it started on the top here. My other fabric is pulled back. So carry on. Feeling that fabric underneath. And then when you've gone as far as you can, then to make it easier for sewing, just come underneath and feel with your thumbs and pull this apart so this is out of the way. And just ease your way down a little bit further. And keep checking, make sure that that's pulled out of the way. And then when you get to this point, it might be easier just to push all that fabric so you're actually on the right side here. And then you can just finish up with the last little bit. And I hope you can see what I'm doing in there. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Sewing on the edge. Again, as before, making sure that the fabric is not caught underneath, pulled away. And let's get it started on the other side again. Using your fingers underneath as before. Sure, it's pulled apart and you're not catching it underneath. And then what you'll have is a nice top stitching on the outside of your bag and all your seams will be enclosed on the inside. And once you've got this far down, feel inside here where the opening is and let's tuck it to the right side out and then it's just a little easier to get further down. Let's open it up, look inside again. Now there's one more thing that you have to pay attention to is your tab. You don't want to sew your tab all the way down on the other on the outside. So you have to feel where it is. Right now it's sitting over here. We want to make sure it's it's on the left hand side because you don't want to sew it down and then you won't have much of a tab left. But inside, you can see where the tab is on both sides. You can make it go one to one side and one to the other as long as the outside tab is pushed away so you can sew across. 
So let's continue the seam here going down. So I wait through the tab, working your fabric down. Now let's just keep the fabric turned to the right side out and let's try that and we'll go down again. And we're getting to our tab here. I'm feeling that the tab is on the left side now. I need to come underneath, push it to the right side so we don't sew that tab down. But we can open up this tab and sew through that. By making sure the tab was not pulled down on the wrong side, we still have our tab to use for our clip. This is the top of your bag with the slits open, and this is the bottom of your bag. So find your side seams and open them up, and we're gonna sew across the bottom, right sides out, and the quarter inch seam allowance, and sew across. sewed at one quarter inch on the bottom of your bag and now trim down to one eighth of an inch. Now turn inside out, poke out your corners, you can use the end of your scissors to get a nice good corner. And then pull out your seams like we have before, ready your fingers if you need to, so you can see the seam line in there. And now we're going to take it back to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch seam just to encase those raw edges on the other side. And if you find it hard to get over a thickness with your machine, start a little bit further into your bag. Start sewing and then do reverse to get up onto your harder part of your fabric there where it's thicker. And then come forward. Let's make our little box corners again. And when you're doing your box corners, just make sure that your seam is folded over to the same side, not this one this way and that one the other way. And it'll lie nice and flat. And now we're going to make our top casing for our drawstring. So we're just going to fold down about a quarter of an inch and we'll press that. And then we're going to fold down again, and that's going to come right up until we meet where we stopped sewing on our side seam. And the same on the other side, and iron in place. And the same for the other side. And now we're just going to take that to the sewing machine and we're going to sew along here and on the other side again sew along here and we've made our casing for our drawstring. Here's your darling little bag. It is just so cute. My little things are always so cute. This is thread. I'm just using macrame card but you can use any kind of cord you want or ribbon whatever you want. I'm just folding it over so it doesn't unravel when I'm threading it through. And we'll start on one end. Take the pin out. Put your two ends together. Tie it in a knot. And then just open this up again. So your knot is just right at the end. 
of where it's open. That's where you want your knot. Grab your other one, same thing. Let's start at this end for your threading. And now turn your bag inside out and we're going to attach it to the inside of our other bag. So turn your big bag inside out, find one of your side seams. I like to bring it down just below the lining. So I will attach it right about here. So you're just going to sew all of this together. So I sewed it to the inside, not on the outside here, but just the inside seam, sewing the little bag inside out to the other bag, our main bag, which is inside out. And now it's on the inside of our bag. Let's turn our bag the right side out. And that's what our bag looks like. And then if you want to fold it up, you just look inside, find your bag, and then you're just going to take it and you're going to pull all of this bag inside the little bag. And look at that. You've got this adorable little bag. And then just open up your little loop, slip on your little hook, and you can attach it to whatever you want to attach it, a larger bag, a backpack, your bike, wherever you're going, there's your darning bag.